The trilogy is set as Leon Rocky Edwards looks to defend his UFC welterweight championship when the Octagon returns to the UK for a massive UFC 286. Here for the big preview, as always, the general Saif Saud. What a trilogy this has been. Kamaru Usman won the first one. Leon Edwards, the comeback of the year, the knockout heard around the world. And now the trilogy stage is set. Unbelievable, Brennan. High drama happening in England. We've got the methodical striker, now the champion, Leon Edwards, who's rounded out his game, worked on his wrestling. Can he defend the belt against the former pound for pound number one, Kamaru Usman, had a dominant reign. He was reaching that welterweight goat status. He was in the talk with the GSP. And then all of a sudden, fifth round, bang, headshot, as Leon particularly said it, ends that whole thing. Can Kamaru come back? Can he regain the title in England? I cannot wait to watch it go down. All right, UFC 278 is when they matched up in 2022. UFC breakdown, you can go back and watch that episode when Safe masterfully you know, went through the games of each of these ones. On this special edition, we're going fight focus, and we are gonna break down in detail each of their first two matchups. We'll start with fight one way back in 2015. Yeah, Brennan, let's take a look at fight one. These guys are early in their careers here. There are a couple fights in the UFC, and. You know, they're just kind of trying to find who they really are here. And you can see Kamara right away rushing to the takedown, getting in this position, because at this point in his career, he was more of a wrestler, right? He had just started kind of finding his striking game. This is where he was comfortable. Right away out the gates, he grabs Leon. You can see Leon trying to frame and get away from him. But this is kind of who Kamaru was. So let's remember that because as we go and look at the next fight, how much they've evolved really is interesting when you watch both of these fights. So you see Kamaru right out the gates grabbing Leon, trying to hold on to him. And Leon does a good job early in this fight of kind of keeping Kamaru off. You can tell that he was prepared. He knew Kamaru was going to come in heavy. But as the fight starts to progress, you see Kamaru start walking it in. And I want to take a look at this and break this down. Let's just watch Kamaru here as he's moving forward. So we know we know that Leon has backed up, but look at this little sidestep. I want to look at this in, in detail, and I want to talk about this because Kamaru does this over and over again. So we know Leon's out of the picture, but he's backed up against the cage. But Kamaru is going to head this way, and he's going to do it with his feet. He's going to hit a little shuffle. And what he's doing, Brendan, is he's cutting off where Leon is going to go. So you can see that little step right there. He's cutting off where Leon is heading. And when we let this play a little bit and we get closer, okay, we'll see that he corralled him forward, right? Leon was trying to escape this way, but with that sidestep that Kamaru took, he lined himself up, right? And kept Leon where he was. And he does this over and over again. He's constantly corralling Leon. And so now he's gonna throw the kick, right? And he corrals Leon, keeps him in that spot. And here we go again. Now we're against the fence. This happens over and over again, where you'll see Kamaru pressure Leon, try to put him against the fence, whether with strikes or with footwork. So this is again early in the fight. Leon's against the cage. He's got wrist control right here. He breaks away. So he still hasn't gotten taken down yet. He's still in there, landing some shots. And let's talk about this right here, because here comes that left head kick, which we've seen before. Let's take a look at this. So one thing that happens here, and we take this away from the first fight, is Kamaru drifts to the right a little bit against Leon. And this side is Leon's left side as he's a southpaw. He's got the left hand and the left kick. And Leon notices this in the first fight. And you'll see here as Kamaru drifts to that power side, Leon throws some shots here and gets Kamaru right there. But you can see right here, Leon sees him dipping down to that side. He sees Kamaru's head is this way, right, in front of all of his power his left hand, and his left leg. And so just with a little reaction, you're going to see Leon throw this left head kick, but you're going to see Kamaru just get his hand up, right? Kamaru just gets enough of that to block it. And when you look at this kick, this is a lot of foot, right? He still lands it, but he just barely kind of hits him with, it, with the instep. He doesn't hit him with the shin, and the truth is this is where we want to hit. But you can see Leon making that little mental note. Whenever Kamara will shift to that side, Leon will throw either a left hand or a left kick, and that will be a very important point as we move forward. So let's keep going here. Leon's landing shots, Kamara's landing shots. You can see Kamara here, he's trying to get that head control. He's got a hold of that bicep. He's always trying to grab Leon and be real physical with him. And it seems that Kamara does have the strength advantage. And all the time he's grabbing him and holding him in these clinch positions. 
And off the break, boom, there's the big elbow right here that he lands. He's always looking for those shots. If he can't get the takedown or he can't dig under hooks, he fires stuff over the top. So he's making the fight physical. And now we're starting to get a little bit later in the fight. And here we go. Now Camaro starts to do what Camaro does, right? He starts to push Leon against the cage. And this happens a lot. And you can see Camaro here, he's working to get the hands locked, right? Leon is standing up tall. He's putting all this pressure forward into Leon. So Leon is pinned against the cage. But what Kamara really wants to do is he wants to lock those hands and he wants to load the legs. So we're going to break this down. We're going to watch how he gets these takedowns. You can see his hips are way out here right now, right? And even though he's got that forward pressure and he's holding him there, he's still really not in a position to take him down or to pick him up and pull him off the fence. But watch what he does here. We're going to watch Kamaru. He's going to take a big, deep step with his left leg right here. And this is the load here. This is when we load the takedown. You always want to get this foot in the middle, right? And you want to get this knee as far as you can as your penetration step. And we can see Kamaru now is all the way loaded in. And now what he's going to do is he's got his hands connected. Now he's going to lift. And let's watch his legs. And it's just like a squat. I mean, look. Look at his hips and everything, how low it's gotten. Now he's got the, the power to lift him up, and that's exactly what he's going to do. Lift, there is the load, now here's the lift, okay? Now here's the thing about Leon Edwards. He's got very long legs. So he balances himself very well here, and you're going to watch his feet. His foot is still on the ground. And this makes Kamaru have to make an adjustment. And Kamaru's going to make this adjustment right here. Let's watch this knee and this leg, what he's going to do. He's going to raise that leg and help elevate Leon to finish this takedown. Leon's foot's still on the ground. Again, his base is still there, so he ain't going anywhere. Let's keep watching this leg and let's watch how he elevates Leon here, lifting that left leg up. And we see it now. Again, it's off the ground. He's elevated him up and he uses that to finish this takedown. Leon tries to post but there it is. And we're going to watch this over and over again. And we're also going to see in the second fight the adjustments that Leon makes to not get taken down in these positions. It was a close fight. It was a very competitive fight. As the fight wore on, Kamara would start to, to take control. But I think it's important to look at all these little points here. So you look at that, Leon shut that takedown down, okay? Now we go to the next series here. Same situation. Kamara makes an adjustment. Kamaro's going to throw this spin kick and stop, all right? He just went for that single leg takedown, and it was stuffed. He throws that kick, Leon backs up, and there's that little tempo pause. And this is where Kamaro was just so smart with his fight IQ. He has a little tempo pause. Now let's watch what he does. As Leon comes back in, he goes right for it again. This time he enters in on the single. He's already starting to flare for the double, and he's going to run Leon all the way across the cage here and take him down. And right when he gets him down, he likes to start attacking the hands and the wrists and the posts that Leon has. So we just see the adjustment here. Kamara went for the shot, didn't get it, backs up, throws a spin kick, waits for Leon to walk forward, tempo change hits him again. So here's the little tricks of the trade that Kamara was using in the very first fight in 2015, he had this fight IQ. So imagine by 2022 as the champion what his fight IQ was. And the same for Leon as they both grown tremendously. So here's where Kamara really starts to kind of break Leon down. And here we see this is the last round of the fight. And this is kind of what happened. Kamara just kept pressing against the fence, getting real physical with him. Here we see Leon, he's got wrist control. And this is an important thing. We're going to see this theme throughout in the, next, in the next bout as well. This is the right thing to do. He's got wrist control. He's trying to jack him up. But we're going to see Leon's mistake here and kind of his, you know, his immaturity at this point as a fighter he goes for a guillotine here, which is not something that you want to do unless you've got that thing all the way locked up. And once you, once you lock that guillotine up, you're going to have to pull guard and you're going to have to be able to hold that person in that position and stretch them out to get that torque to finish the choke. So right away, you understand, Kamaru understands all that. Kamaru understands all that. So right away, Kamaru gets, just gets deeper, doubles down on his takedown, right? He's going to lift this again with that load. Let's watch his legs. He's going to lift and load right here. There's the load. And he's going to pull. His hands are connected. But what he's going to do is 
he's going to go right to side control, and he's going to control Leon's legs. And by controlling Leon's legs and going to side control, there's absolutely no chance of him getting choked. And you'll see right here, he's got Leon's legs. Leon's can't get to guard from here. So now this is actually just keeping him stuck. Now he's just holding Kamaru close to him and keeping himself in side control. And you can even get a Von Flu choke from here if somebody holds onto a guillotine in space and you're in side control. So this is a mistake from Leon. And this is, you know, I don't want to call it his immaturity. He was, a, he was a great fighter. He was in the UFC. But these are the small details that matter and the devil's in the details. And that's how Kamara would get that takedown. And this, this would prove big in this fight because as we're going to see now, Kamara just goes to work here in this third round. And, and what he's doing is he's controlling Leon's opposite wrist. And we see this all the time in this fight. He's got a hold of Leon's wrist. He can't post. He can't get up. And Kamara will hold onto that wrist and just go to work. And he does. I mean, he, he pounds on Leon here for this whole round. And this is kind of what people remember from this fight. They don't remember the competitive first and second round. Kamara wins the unanimous decision and moves on with his career. And of course, Leon Edwards earned his rematch and then some seven years later nearly until he got the title shot against Kamaru Usman again to try to exact revenge. And what a fight it was. I mean, it's unbelievable, Brennan. This whole story is unbelievable. And, and in the time that Leon is climbing up the division and winning and winning and winning, Kamar Usman becomes a welterweight great in the, the talks of being as good as GSP, trying to tie Anderson Silva's record for the most consecutive wins. This was a huge fight when these guys met last, and there was so much at stake. And Kamara was really favored to win. And as we see, he controlled a lot of the fight. So it was really high drama until the end. So let's take a peek let's here. Let's get into it. So Leon completely rebuilds himself. He's ready for the moment. Kamaru now a seasoned champion. But let's, let's take a look. Round one, there's the cutoff again with the feet. There's that little fainting. We just got to talk about this. I mean, Usman gets Leon to react to whatever he's doing, and, 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 and Leon takes a back step right away. I mean, it kind of goes all the way back to the last fight when Leon is backing up against the fence and letting Kamaru kind of bully him around. And this is a theme here that... Um, that Usman tries to do to Leon every time that they meet in every situation. And I think the physicality is going to play a big role here. So we see Usman trying to track him here. And we see Leon, he's kind of waiting. We're going to take a look at this. Usman sees that he's waiting in front. So he fires this little kick and give him something to think about. He knows that Leon is waiting to counter. He knows Leon's got eyes on him and he's waiting. So he throws this little kick to keep him busy. After he throws the kick... He comes back. He's always watching Leon. Let's watch what Kamaru does here. He's very good at tempo changing here. He's going to wait. And he uses this jab over and over and over again. And we need to talk about this. Kamaru Usman, 76-inch reach. Very long for the welterweight class. Leon Edwards, even though being taller than him, only has a 74-inch reach. So Kamaru has a 2-inch reach advantage, and he utilizes it over and over again. He gets that little sprint step get something in his face, and then right after that, you can guess what he's going to do. He gets right in on the legs. So, Kamaru Usman, same story, right? But Leon Edwards has made some big improvements, and we're going to see that here. This goes all the way back to the first fight when he gets him in the same spot, and we're going to break this down here. He's going to go for the same kind of takedown here. He's going to get in there. He's going to try to lift and hike. Again, we go back to talking about Leon's got that leg posted still on the ground because he's so tall. Kamaru's trying to drive him over, trying to hike him up. But Leon has made those improvements in seven years. He posts his hand, and he's back up, and he's in the fight. And this is so important. He's gotten way better at digging under hooks, right? And this is what you want to do when you're against the fence. You want to dig under hooks, and you want to turn. The basics are what win, and this is the most important thing in takedown defense is the underhook. So Leon just gets right to work, stops that first takedown of Kamaru, and shows an improvement in his strength as well, I feel like, turning Kamaru here and kind of giving him a hard time. Now here goes Leon. He's starting to wrestle. That didn't work out too well. He... Kamaru's starting to go to work again. We've seen this theme before. But again, this is a different Leon Edwards. This isn't the same Leon Edwards from 2015. Leon Edwards, now a black belt in jiu-jitsu. And we're going to watch what he does here. He's got one foot on the hip, which is what you want to do to try to create space and separation so that way he can't, Kamaru can't pressure him with his hips. But this is the other thing I want to watch. He's constantly controlling that arm, right? And he's going to control that arm for a reason. He's also controlling the posture and trying to control the head. So this is 
very good guard work from Leon. And he's gonna use this position to try to sweep. And we're gonna see this right coming up here. Watch what Leon does. Watch his left knee. All right. This is called a knee shield right here. He's got his shin all the way across right now, Kamaru's belly, all right? Now I wanna watch this leg and what it's gonna do. This leg is gonna come straight down to the mat and is gonna try to cut this leg of, of Kamaru, the base, while this knee shield elevates him. So we call this a scissor sweep. He's gonna elevate him and cut him. He also has to control his head so that way he can hold on to him while he does this. So Leon is gonna hit this sweep and he's gonna get a nice little scramble here, right there. He elevates Kamara with the sweep. We can see that Kamara's up in the air. We see the leg that he cut him with. We see him trying to create that space to scramble, but Kamara has such a good base, he doesn't go all the way over. He comes back down, but Leon uses that to get up. And this is super impressive here, and it shows the strength of Leon Edwards here, right? And it just shows how tuned in he is. He's got his hands on the mat, he knows his position, he knows where he is. It really kind of alludes to the fact that he's improved so much that he could use his jiu-jitsu to create that separation and get up. And right away, not even fully sweeping him, he's still up, he's still posted up. So Leon's gonna get to the fence and right when he gets to the fence, we're gonna see this over and over again from Leon. These guys are gonna have such a wrist battle in these clinch positions. And there's so many things that happen here when you let someone control your hand. So I want to pay attention to that, and it's going to be a theme. So he's, he's going to peel Kamaru's hands off of him, and that's what he needs to do. And he also needs to turn and face. So you never want to have your back to your opponent in any situation inside the octagon. It's never going to be good, right? Whether you're against the fence, whether you're on the ground, you've got to turn and face. So we're going to see Leon here. He's going to work to turn and face. He stays on that wrist. He's gonna bring this, he's gotta bring this arm all the way over Kamaru's head, right? He's gotta come all the way around. And we're gonna see him do this, which is the right thing to do. It's never easy, so now he's all the way back around, right? Well, while he's doing that, Kamaru sees an opportunity to try to trip the leg, right? And I think, again, this goes back to the physicality of Kamaru, how strong he is. Everybody knows how strong he is and how strong of a wrestler he is. But Leon has also gotten a lot stronger. He obviously has been working on his physique and on his physical strength because these positions that he failed at in the first fight, he was able to sustain himself in this fight a lot more. So we're gonna see Leon, he stays up, that trip doesn't work, and now here's a very critical piece. Now you see Leon has the underhook on this side. He's got a wizard right here on this side, okay? So as this goes on, Kamaru's thing, all right, he's got head position. Kamaru's not in a bad spot. He's got his head lower. Kamaru has dominated Leon up to this point in grappling. Nobody has ever taken Kamaru Usman down in his UFC career. Zero takedowns. Colby had that little moment where he kind of touched down, but it didn't count officially. And for a national champion wrestler, trust me, it matters. So that's what makes this unbelievable. So as we watch Leon, he's gonna hike that underhook up and now he's gonna go to this position, get a little butterfly grip. But Kamaru still has this underhook on this side. And if I have one underhook, I feel pretty good. So Kamaru's in a decent position, he's got one underhook. We know Leon has this underhook and has gotten that grip. So they're kind of one for one. Leon does have the grip connected, but Kamaru feels, he feels all right here. Leon's gonna step through right here. Now, before we see what happens here, I wanna talk about Kamaru's mindset. Let's watch this hand. If I feel like I'm in a lot of danger, I'm attacking what's attacking me with my hands. If I feel like I'm not in danger, I can throw little body shots and do little stuff like that because I feel like I have time. I'm not in a bad spot. Watch what he does with this little right hand. He's gonna throw this little, just this little baby punch. And at the same time, he's throwing that baby punch Let's watch what Leon does. Leon is gonna take that leg and he is gonna outside trip Kamar Usman, right? Even in this moment now, you could, you could tell Kamar was like, oh man, wait a minute, something might happen. But when you watch what happens and how it happens, Kamar still has the underhook. And let's, let's 
Let's watch this in slow motion. Pretty incredible. As Leon pulls his leg out, in some miraculous fashion, Kamaru Usman keeps both of his feet completely planted. This is the ultimate limbo right here. I mean, I, I, it's incredible, yeah. his balance. And if you look at him and you look at his face, he is looking this way. And the reason he's looking this way is because he takes this underhook and he's trying to throw over, throw by Leon here and explode while maintaining his base. And he almost does it here. He almost does it. Let's watch Leon Edwards here. Let's freeze it right there. So you can see Leon is head first right here. Kamaru is now, his legs are, he's, this one's still making contact. He's used that one to try to explode over, but Leon just enough strength to stay on top. And this is big right here. There's the first takedown ever against Kamaru Usman, one of the best welterweights in the history of the UFC. Leon knows that Kamaru's gonna explode. So let's watch how he prepares for this. And, and guys with long legs do this a lot, and he does it very, very well here. We're gonna watch Leon's ankles here. He's gonna cross his ankles underneath, and he's gonna create a little bit of a lock here. Let's get a good picture of it right there. So what he does is he crosses his ankles underneath Kamaru's body. So Kamaru's actually not even on the ground. Now Kamaru is resting on top of Leon's calves. So when Kamaru tries to explode and move around, he's not based on the ground, right? He doesn't, he doesn't have a base. He's kind of just moving around under Leon's legs. And this is exactly what Leon wants. So you're gonna watch as Kamaru explodes here. Leon's gonna keep that lock and that pressure with his hamstrings. Kamaru's trying to fight him off. He's trying to explode. He's pushing on the hips right here, but that lock stays. And again, there it is. And so now he's got Kamaru kind of turning sideways, but again, he's still underneath his calf and that's what you want. That's how you keep somebody down. And if he flips over, you look for the hooks. So let's watch Leon's groundwork here. And you know, he didn't look like a black belt in 2015, but he looks like a black belt here. Leon is biding his time, but we're gonna see what Leon is doing. Leon is actually working on the wrist control, and here it is right here. So again, we keep talking about it. Wrist, 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 wrist. Leon's got a seatbelt and wrist control, and now what he's gonna do, and he, again, he maintains the ankles underneath, and now Leon is just gonna pull him back on top of him and get proper back control. And let's go back to this right here. This is so key. Again, it's grabbing the wrists. So as Leon has the seat belt and connects his hands together here, he also has that wrist of Kamaru, right? He's reached around, one is underneath and one is over the top, but he's grabbing his wrist. So as he pulls him back, he also has a wrist as well. And we're gonna, these guys are about to have an epic wrist battle right here is about to happen. So Kamaru understands the position. He sees what's happened, but also, we see Leon is looking for that body triangle. He's already got that foot there, and Kamaru knows that, so he has raised that knee up to try to block that side and not allow that lock to happen. Once Leon gets his foot behind his knee, that's gonna be a problem from Kamaru, and he knows that. So let's watch what happens here between these two. So Kamaru's trying to block the hook, and so he's gonna take his hand, and here he is. But when you're defending a choke, you always wanna be Two on one, you know that, two on one. Well, if I'm blocking the hook with one hand, I can't be two on one, and Leon knows that. So this battle ensues between these two, and it really impressed me how Leon understood exactly what to do to counter what Kamara was doing. So again, there's the hand. We see Leon, he's staying on the wrist here, right? As Kamara tries to block that hook out, he attacks the neck. Look at how slick this is. Leon goes, all right, he's busy now. Now's my time. He tries to get the choking hand deep, attack the neck. We like to grab the shoulder. I always tell him, if you get that hand deep, grab that shoulder so you can keep it. And then now look, he's got wrist control on that one hand. So now he's controlling one of the arms while trying to choke with the other one while Kamaru's got the other hand defending the hook. So all these things are happening and these guys are making all these adjustments, right, within milliseconds to counter each other. And Kamaru understands, he's a black belt as well from Jorge Santiago. He's well-versed, he understands what he needs to do. But again, 
you can still see he's still worried about that lock happening. And he's also paying attention to what Leon's doing, controlling his wrist. But now, none of that matters now. Now the lock is there. So now Leon has got control. He's got long legs and he's got that body triangle on Camaro and Camaro is not going anywhere. He's also got this wrist control here and he's got this right here. We have never, ever seen Kamaru Usman on his back, let alone seen him with somebody with a full body triangle locked on him, attacking his wrist and attacking his neck. So Leon does a great job here of controlling Kamaru. So you see him, he's attacking the choke. Kamaru knows he's got to go two on one. He covers that wrist. Now we see it again. Now they go back to the wrist battle. But again, we want two on one. So he wants to go two on one this hand and try to get it on the other side of his head. You can't choke somebody with the one arm, right? Well, there's a couple of people that can, but it's not easy to do, especially from the rear naked position because you can't get enough force, right? You can't get enough pressure. So Kamaru knows if I can control one of his arms, I should be all right. But he has to also turn his hip into the body lock to put pressure on that lock. You sit out towards the body lock and it creates pressure on the ankles. Leon is in a position right here where he has very slickly stuck his foot in Kamaru's knee right there, not letting Kamaru turn around. So this is a position that Leon gets a lot, and you can tell. So we watch this battle unfold here. Kamaru's got to be patient here, and he is. And you see the two-on-one continues, and it's, it's, it's really going to keep on going where they're just fighting for this. Now we see Leon. Looks like he's getting somewhere. He's got some pressure here, and he's finally got a little bit of a connection right? He's got a little bit of a connection. But Kamaro's got his hand in there, and it's not under the chin. You could see Kamaro's kind of his lips. So it's not quite under the chin, but he's gotten himself where he can connect his hands. This is going to go on and on. Kamaro's going to peel this, but Kamaro's not in a position to get up. He's not because of this body triangle. And he realizes that. That's why he doesn't really freak out. Finally, now you see the two-on-one right here, and this is what Kamaro wanted the whole time. You want a two-on-one, and he's going to take this arm. He's going to start working it to the other side of his head. That's what you're looking for. But the round is going to end in, in this position, and this is the start of the second round. So Kamaru now goes to the corner knowing he lost that round. Yeah. Leon won that round. Leon had gotten a body triangle. He got back control. Obviously, the most dominant thing that happened. He got control time. So Kamaru comes out knowing, I just lost the round of Leon Edwards. So you think that Leon Edwards would build some confidence from that. But I guess old habits die hard because he backs up against the fence in the beginning of round two. And before I even play it, you can see him. He's got his hands covered and he's being very reactive right away. And it seems that Camaro just understands that he can be very physical and kind of bully Leon around. And he goes right to work. Punch, punch. I mean, just look, just look at Leon's posture and position just covering up and against the fence, the worst possible position for him. So Kamaru comes out, guns blazing, right in his face, round two. Going right back to his old tricks of the feigning and the faking, keeping Leon guessing, what, what, what are you doing? And you can see Leon is being very reactive. He's always watching Kamaru. Kamaru's always kind of leading the dance here. So I was looking for Leon to come out confident in round two, but... Uh, for some reason, he kind of reverted back. So Kamaro just goes right back to work. He gets that little feint, that little level change, and let's watch Leon's hands here. So just off the feint and the level change, eyes closed, hands up, you know? Just from the feint. And it just shows a reactive mindset that's going on, and which is a, it's a key point because there's an, a crazy awesome turning point in this story. So, but this is early in the story, and we see Leon, he's, even after having success, he's very reactive. And Kamaro obviously knows that too. Kamaro's watching him the whole time. Kamaro with a very fight, a high fight IQ, always paying attention to see what kind of reactions he can get from his opponents, making the necessary adjustments then to win. Bam. There's that jab. Kamaro Usman has developed an incredible jab that he times so well, he uses it again. If I punch you in the face, you can't react to what I'm going to do to your legs. Back him against Cage, just throwing more and more power shots whenever he gets him backed up. And here we go, we see him in the middle. There's the feint again. Now let's talk about this. This seems like a very small thing. Leon just landed a left hand. 
But I want to go ahead and unpack this and look at it from the top. So you watch Leon here. He's in an orthodox stance, okay? He's got his right leg back. You got Camaro in his orthodox stance. Camaro's going to come forward with that jab. He's going to touch Leon, but Leon's going to make an adjustment here. As he backs up, let's watch what he does with his legs. He's going to switch to southpaw. And this is a critical piece here because now that he's southpaw, Kamaru should want to stay outside of the leg. But again, as I stated earlier, Kamaru makes this mistake a few times where he will drift into the power side, right? Now that Leon has switched to southpaw, these are the things that he needs to worry about. But Kamaru obviously knows what he's doing, but he did that a few times and he got away with it. He was very successful. But this is something that we're going to see Leon understand and have success with. Leon is now southpaw. Leon's going to throw a punch right here. All right, now let's stop it. As Leon throws that punch, we see again Kamaru's head drift this way. This is not where you want to go because, again, this is the power side. Power leg, power hand. So Leon got outside of his foot, right, as Kamaru drifted towards the power side and corralled him towards his power side. And that's why this is so important because this is a fundamental mistake here by Kamaru. And he's going to pay for it. He's going to get hit with that left hand. And you can see, again, he is literally right in front of all the danger. You can see Leon's got that nice angle. Leon's head is way out here, right where you want to be in a safe zone. This is exactly how you want to fight somebody in stand-up. So Leon has some success whenever Kamaru drifts to his power side. And Kamaru got away with it a, a, a few times, but you see it here. It's a clean shot. You don't want to lean into the power side. They go back and forth. Again, we've got to talk about how Kamaru gets Leon to react to everything he does. Here Kamaru goes and hits him with a feint, with that level change. And you would think with this level change in this position, this looks like I'm trying to wrestle here, right? This doesn't look like I'm trying to punch. But man, he's just got Leon just covering up a lot, and he's doing a lot of reacting here. So Kamaru sees that. He could have shot a shot there. He comes back up, and he's got eyes on Leon here, right? He's looking at Leon. He's locked into Leon and seeing what Leon's reaction is. Leon still got his hands covered, but Leon is going to open his eyes up right here. Here we go. Now he's back. So we're going to see the timing of these two and how much they've evolved right here. This is a cool scenario because they both make a good read. We're going to watch Kamaru again on the tempo change. He gets that little level change going again. And as he level changes, you see the hands are coming up. Is it a takedown? This time, Kamaru goes straight down the pipe lands a perfect right hand right to the chin. So that shows you Kamara with a level change, get a reaction, level change, jab, level change, get a reaction, level change. Now straight right hand, split it right down the middle. Look at where the leg is, we're doing everything right here. We're right where we're supposed to be. But Leon, you can see him kind of trying to grab for the head. So Leon had already made a decision. He's like, I'm throwing this knee and here it comes. He throws a knee right as Kamara comes in. He doesn't really hit him too cleanly, but he does back Kamaru off. But it shows you he's starting to figure out the timing of that. He was, he was like, all right, he's going to come in. He throws the knee, and these two are starting to understand each other. And this kind of shows you they're starting to know each other's tricks a little. So again, backing him up all the way to the fence with a jab. Now here we see Leon backed up against the cage, and here goes Kamaru. Just straight up grabbing his head. Come here. Come here. I got something for you. What do I got for you? A right hand. What else do I got for you? A right elbow. And Leon is, just takes way too many shots here against Kamaru. I don't know why he keeps backing up against the fence. Huge elbow. And I'm, Leon never does well in those positions. And I look for his coaches to be all over that going into the next fight. Well, something Leon Edwards said was a factor, the elevation of Salt Lake City which doesn't deal with in London, but that would make sense after a first round where he expended a lot of energy, second, third, fourth round. He said that was a factor where Usman trains in Denver. Where did the first fight take place, Brandon? First fight was in Orlando, Florida. Isn't that sea level? Yes, it is. I rest my case. So moving forward, 
Camaro just seems to have that pressure. And look, some guys get pressured. I mean, it is what it is. I mean, it's Kamaru Usman, one of the greatest fighters of our generation, right? So, I mean, I get it. Um, and now Leon's got the strap, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, now, but you can see again, here's that black line. And whenever you've got a striker versus a grappler, you always tell them, do not back up past this line. Why? Because the cage comes into play. And we know Kamaru loves to use the cage. He loves to back people up. He loves to get them against the fence. But again, we see Leon constantly backing up, and he's going to do it again. And Kamaru just pressures him forward here, and he's just going to unload on him. Big shots, and there's Edwards with the guard again. And just going to work. And you, do, you just don't want to fight with your back against the fence like that. So let's take a look at this, too. This goes back to the footwork that Kamaru does so well here. He's always going to where Leon is trying to escape to. And we, he cuts off the octagon so well. So we know Leon is like, all right, I got to get out of here. I don't want to stay here. As Leon starts to go this way, Kamaru is going to cut him off right here and get to where he's going. And we see that. And he's going to throw this left hook. Now, this punch isn't meant to land. It's just meant to corral, right? And again, we see Leon shells up. And he corrals him, and that's exactly what he wants. Keeps his back against the fence, head control, and then level changes. Again, we know Kamaru is putting all that pressure in to Leon, forward against the fence, but what he's really looking for is to lock these hands here, get under his butt, and take him for a ride, and that's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to lock his hands and lift, put Leon down, and immediately start going to work. Leon tries to re-guard here. So now... Now we're moving in around three. Well, round two was a huge departure from round one. Usman won round two fairly easily, I thought. And, and the, 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 the more, more important piece here, Brennan, is that the fight is moving again to how the first fight went. Takedowns, ground control, pressure, backing you up against the cage, you know, just kind of bullying Leon around. So now we're in round three, and it's one to one. So... Man, we got to take a look at this. Let's break this down, Brendan. This is, again, going to kind of talk about the reactiveness of Leon Edwards. Um, here they're playing the range game, and what happens is I touch, I see where you're at, I get a feel. I know if I'm longer than you where I, what I can do from this position. And also, in wrestling, we always say, if I can touch you, I can take you down. I don't want to shoot a shot from out here right? It's too far away. I want to be able to get hands on you so that way I know where my distance is and I can manage it correctly. Well, this is exactly what Kamara is doing here. He's, he's managing dis distance and he's measuring distance. And what he's going to do is he's going to use that little measurement here. And Leon's going to stick his hand out again. Kamara's going to stick his hand out again. And Kamara goes, oh, there's your hand. I'm going to go right underneath you. And this just shows you how Kamaru at this point in the fight is a step ahead. He's already down on the leg. Leon's still up here, right? So we know full extension too with his hand, not, not trying to pull him. We know that Kamaru is just a step ahead right now going into the third round. Kamaru gets in on the legs and we're going to see Kamaru pull the leg forward close to him and then come in on this double. And I want you to watch the head you always want to get the head up here so you don't get stuck in weird spots. You're going to see Kamaro's head start coming up as he drives to the fence. There are the eyes. Just good wrestling. Driving Leon to the fence. You can see Leon trying to wedge that right arm in there. But th these are deep, deep shots. And when you're reactive and when you're waiting and when you're not being proactive against a guy like this, this is what's going to happen again. Now, once I get locked under the butt like that, I can just pull you away from the fence, right? I don't want to try to lift you up. I want to pull you away, like kind of like taking a chair and just pulling it out. That's what I'm trying to do because it's a lot less energy and it's much more efficient. So he's got that lock, but I want to watch how he does this. There's the load that we talked about, the step and the load. Now he's got the load. He's got the lock. He's going to pull him away. But I want to talk about what he does here. Now, what you want to do is you want to take your opponent's legs and you want to put them up high and you want to pull them away from the fence 
and stack him. So that way his hips aren't active. Everything in jujitsu is hips. Well, if my hips can't move and I'm like this on the ground, I can't defend. And when you're stacked like that, that's when you get hit big and you can't use your feet to defend. And that's exactly what Kamaru's gonna do. This stacking right here, this stacked position is exactly what you want for ground and pound. Because you can see now we're head over head, which is very important. We wanna be head over head when we punch down so we can drive all that force down. I don't wanna be punching at you like this from the guard, right? This is gonna have no power. I need to get my posture in. I need to get my knees in. I need to stack you so that way I can get power in on those shots. And that's a very dominating position here, not one you wanna be in. And Leon isn't even in a position to post and get up. So again, Kamaro just being real physical here in, in, in the third round, backing him up landing big punches, big shots. There's another big elbow. And then right in on the legs again. He's giving him the lock, right? Pull down. Now we see that post, but again, we talk about this theme over and over again, right? He's attacking his post. He knows that Leon wants to post, so he's gonna attack that wrist. Attacking the wrist. Now let's watch this. This is so slick here, and it's a little detail that if you don't pay attention to it, you won't see it. Kamaru is holding on to his foot with one hand and his wrist with the other. Well, if you've got my wrist and you got my foot, how am I going to get up? And so he keeps a hold of this foot, and while keeping hold of the foot, he's going to advance his hook with his left leg. So he's still got the foot. You can clearly see it. There's the foot. There's the wrist. So Leon cannot base. And as Leon is kind of trying to turn into him, as you see that, which is the right thing, but when someone's holding your foot and your wrist, now watch Kamaru. As he takes this leg right here and he gets the hook, which he will get, he will let go of the foot and get that control position. So this just shows you, I mean, still got the foot. Doesn't let go, doesn't let go, doesn't let go. Still has the foot, lets go of the foot, sets in the hook. So Kamaru is always controlling not only the arms, but he's also controlling the feet. And, and these are the type of things that really break somebody down. And uh, so now he's got wrist control. He has that hook on the inside. He's gonna take that foot. We'll watch that foot. And now he's gonna start riding that foot and hooking that leg a little bit. There it is. So he hooks his foot here, similar to how Leon was using his leg in that body triangle. Now he's got wrist control here and he's putting all that weight. Look how close he is, like a backpack on Leon. He's got all his weight on him, right? This is a bad spot for Leon. Um, and it's one of those things where Kamaru's not using any energy and Leon's using all of his energy, which is what you want when you're trying to, to grapple. Uh, you want your opponent to feel your weight and Leon's just in a bad spot right here. And those scrambles that Leon lets happen where he doesn't fight out ends stuff into these positions, which, which these rounds all went to Kamaru from this ground control and, and backing him against the fence. So those moments that, that Leon needed to really scramble in the second and the third, um, he didn't. And, and Kamaru's gonna control him, ride this out. Obviously, Kamaru had lost the first round. He's gotta put some rounds in the bank. So just smart grappling here. Now we're entering round four. Usman got that round in the bank. So he's won the second round. He's won the third round. Again, looks pretty similar to the first fight. I think he, you know, he's kind of well into control at this point. So it's two to one. We're going into the fourth round. Here they are in the middle. You're going to see him right in front of each other. And Kamaro's going to slip that punch from Leon and land that jab, right? And, and, and just to think of Kamaro Usman you know, against a dangerous striker like Leon Edwards in the fourth round of a title fight to be so confident, just be slipping and, and, and landing shots. It shows you where his mindset was, which again is going to be important, um, and how confident he was, just how confident he was at this time in this fight uh, in, in all areas. He's just standing there. He doesn't look panicked. He doesn't look like he's trying to rush takedowns. He's going to land this jab, and then we're going to watch Leon. Big swing here. Look at that. He brings this thing way down here. 
And you could see a little bit of desperation starting to come out of Leon now as we get in the fourth round. You could kind of see the dejection on his face. His, his body language was not very positive. And we see Leon, he's going to throw this big punch. And Leon is a very precise striker. So, and I mean, Usman just out of there, you know. So as we enter the fourth round, we've got a confident Usman and a little bit of a desperate Leon. Now, this is an important piece right here because we see the foot battle. Right now, we've got Kamaru just a little outside the foot. But whenever Kamaru makes the mistake of drifting towards the power side, we see Leon make these adjustments. And we see a little faint here from Leon. And we see Kamaru just kind of standing in front. And now you can see he's just drifted just a little bit more in front. The, the legs are about even, but there's just a little bit of a change in the foot position. And Leon sees that. And whenever he sees Kamaru in the front of him, in the middle of that power side, he makes really good adjustments. He's going to kick that body with that front kick. And whenever he has a chance, when Kamaru stays right in front of him and he goes first, he lands. He really does. And I think that's a key point. For Leon to do well in this fight, he's got to go first. He's got to go first. He's got to make Kamaru be reactive. And, you know, beautiful front kick, confident. Um, he's got great striking. And he hits Kamaru with it. Just wasn't a lot. He just didn't throw first a lot. So he hits Kamaru with that important point. Whenever he gets in front, he's successful. He gets him on the fence here. And let's talk about this a little bit. We see Kamaru. He's going to do the little you know, the little whatever with his hands here and kind of, but Leon is trying to change the tide. So he gives him a little whatever. You're not very strong. And we're going to see what happens here. Usman looks like he's taking a break or I don't know what he's doing, but he's waiting. He's going to fight the hands. He's going to break free. Right after he breaks free, you could kind of see the annoyance he had on his face, right? He kind of looked annoyed more than anything. He's like, oh, you want to grab me? All right, I'm going to put you against the fence, back you up. Kamaru pushes him against the cage. Here we see him connect his hands again. There's that connection right there. We see Leon standing very tall. And we're going to watch Kamaru here as he lifts and loads. And this is the best one that he's done. We talked about it earlier about wanting to get that penetration step very deep. His foot is on the fence. That's how deep of a step he's taken. And that's going to allow him to get even more of a lift and really explode into this takedown. And let's watch his takedown and watch what he does with Leon. Boom, right? He takes Leon down so much, he almost makes Leon go over. And this is, again, that explosion. And we talk about the legs, getting the legs up. Now his hips are what? He can't shrimp. He can't regard. He can't do anything. His hips aren't even on the ground. So Kamaru in the fourth round, showing the physicality. Oh, you're going to hold me against the cage? Get off me, right? I'm going to back you up. I'm going to flare you, take you down, get your legs over your head. This is my world. So Kamaru still dominating this fight in the fourth round with the grappling. And that's the end of the fourth round, okay? Now I really need to talk about this as we enter the fifth round. And I have to recognize from coach to coach, I've got to recognize Leon Edwards' coach, David Lavelle. This cornering right here, to me, is really one of the biggest points in this fight. And what his coach does right here and, and how he changes the trajectory of this fight, he deserves a lot of praise. And he did get a lot of attention and interviews and all that. I saw him on Ariel Hawani and all that. And he deserves it because he knew his guy so well in this moment. He knew exactly what he needed to say to him. It wasn't pleasant and it wasn't fun. And I mean, he even pokes him a little bit and prods him a little bit because here he is, Coach Lavelle, going into this last round, having the flashbacks of going into the last round in the first fight and what happens. And we see him here. Listen, stop saying this. Come on, man. What's wrong with you? Come on, Leon, man. You got it, man. Come on. Come on, Leon. Come on. But you could see Leon, and he got that little bit of spark that he needed, that little bit of spark. And I'm going to tell you, coach to coach, it takes a lot of energy, right? But that tells me that he cares. And this is what I think he had in his head. This is the first fight. And we put this in here just so you could see. This is Leon against the fence, you know, third round. It had been a long fight. 
He's on the wrist, and we talked about this earlier. He goes to the guillotine, he gets taken down, and this is kind of the fight. He ends up getting turtling, ends up getting dominated, and that's it. And the fight looks like, to be fair, that it's going this way again into the fifth round. But Coach Lavelle didn't want that for his pupil, so he stepped in and, and gave him that talk. Now here we go, fifth round, same spot. Looks for a little switch, here's the takedown, stop. This time, for whatever reason, Leon Edwards, I'm not gonna stay down this time. And you can see this, his whole butt and everything is not on the ground because of this one post, right? That one post and this one scramble is huge in the history of mixed martial arts. This one scramble. And we always say as a coach, you never know what scramble, what moment is gonna win you the fight. And this little moment right here is so big. Leon's not going down. No, not today. He gets back up on his feet, starts playing the wrist game. This is good defense here. He's wizarding here. Stops that takedown. He's not done yet. So we see Leon Edwards on his feet. Now we see Leon Edwards moving forward a little bit. And this is what I was waiting for. You know, as I stated earlier, whenever he goes forward, he has a lot of success and he should go forward more. So he starts going forward and we see Kamaru drifting to the power side again. He's walking into the power side and Leon sees that. He's locked in. So again, as I said earlier, when Leon sees him in front of the power side, he gives him something to remember. Front kick. This time it's the front kick. But watch what Leon does here. He sees that front kick, but he switches his stance like he did earlier, and he changes to orthodox as he comes back. Now, when he does this, he's going to also drift this way outside of the power leg, which is the exact position he would want to be in orthodox. Very slick how he does this. He's going to fade off as Kamaru comes forward and misses the jab. And now he's in a good space for what he's about to do. One, two. So Leon has this tricks that he uses with his footwork that allow him to land strikes in good positions when Kamara's in transition. And this is important. This is an important piece for Leon going into the next fight. I look for him to switch his footwork up a lot and create a lot more of these situations that he can win. Lands the right hand. Clock is ticking. Fight's almost over. And Leon is starting to come alive. He's starting to throw offense. It's not over yet. Leon's fainting and faking. We see Usman drifting a little bit into the power side. He faints the jab. Shot heard around the world. There's really nothing else to say. I'm gonna let it play. I'm just gonna let it play. This was one of the biggest upsets. And the way it happened, I mean, the drama, the way it unfolded, Kamaru so close to history, so close to memorializing his career, for him to land this kick the way that he did. I mean, this is why people love MMA. It really, truly is. And let's break this down and, and, and see what really happens here and try to understand what it was. And, you know, people say Leon got lucky. Leon did not get lucky. And that, that's what I tried to, to show in this breakdown is that Leon understood whenever Kamara went to that side, he throws left kicks. He threw that left hand around the guard. He knows that's not where Kamara was supposed to be. And every time Kamara went there, what? He took advantage of it. And when we look at this again, we see Kamaru drifting into the power side. And Leon understands that. You're gonna see Leon use his hands here to kind of put him in front of Kamaru, right? We always say, set your kicks up with punches, right? Put something in front of the other guy to make them worry about it. Even if it's just a hand or a fist or whatever, to make them pay attention to that. If I'm doing something up here, I can kick your legs down here. Well, Leon does that perfectly right here. He's gonna put hands in the face of Kamaru. First, he just kind of throws that right hand out, but let's look at that. This is the key point right here, Brendan, is he takes his left hand and puts it right in front of Kamaru's face. So when he's here, he's doing this, right? Exactly. He does this. 
And when he does this, you see Kamaru drift to get out of the way, and he does not see the kick coming. The kick is already on the way. And it's not like the first kick that we showed in the first fight. This is Shin right here. And you can tell it's Shin because you can see the whole foot. There ain't no foot involved in that. And that's bone to jaw right there. And, and that's all she wrote. It's, it doesn't get more devastating than that. So Kamaru going into the power side, Leon at the very last minute catches the Hail Mary, new welterweight champion of the world. All right, an extensive breakdown of both of their fights. They've spent 39 minutes inside the octagon together. So they obviously know each other very well. Let's go to keys to victory as Leon Edwards looks to hold on to that belt. What does he need to do? Well, Brandon, he's got to move forward and he's got to use his footwork. I mean, I, I, I talked about this at length. He's backing up a lot. He's being reactive instead of being proactive. He's got to be proactive in this trilogy. You know Kamaro's going to make adjustments. He's got to go forward. He's got to give Kamaro a different look with that footwork with the orthodox and with the southpaw. Keep confusing him and keep making him guess wrong, which he did in the last fight. So a very important piece for Leon to go forward. Next, he has to stay off the fence. He cannot allow Kamaro to push him back against the cage get easy access to his hips, lock his hands and get those takedowns, and get all that control time and rack it up and get behind again in a five round fight. He's gotta make sure he circles off the cage and frames away. We've seen him do it successfully. We know he can do it. He just has to do it every time Kamaro starts backing him up. Stay away from that black line and try to keep Kamaro in the middle. Lastly, he's got to win the scrambles, Brendan. If he wouldn't have won that last scramble in the fifth round by posting that hand and getting up, he wouldn't be the welterweight champion. So I think that we see a mature Leon Edwards who, who can win in all phases when he's aggressive and goes forward. And I'm used to seeing him do that against a lot of fighters, but not as much against Kamaru. So I just can't wait to see you know, him now as the champion, what kind of attitude and, and what kind of game plan he brings to this fight. We scroll over to Kamaru Usman now, who is still the betting favorite in this matchup. What are his keys to get the belt back? Absolutely, Brendan. Kamaru Usman needs to keep using the jab. We saw him have a great success with the jab. He, his whole offense starts with the jab. It's the cornerstone of everything he does. He uses to cover distance. He uses to back him up, land his power shot with his right hand, or access the hips with wrestling, get him to be defensive with the feints and the fakes. Got to keep using the jab. With that, he's got to utilize the wrestling. He uses the jab to get to the wrestling, right? He's had so much success in this 39 minutes against Leon Edwards. Yes, Leon did get the takedown, but Kamaru has won the bulk of the grappling and appears to be the stronger, more physical guy out of the two. And Leon has gotten stronger, but I don't know if he's gotten stronger than Kamaru since their previous meeting. And lastly, he has to push the pace. It seems that Kamaru puts Leon on his back foot, makes him a little bit uncomfortable with his pace, right? And every time Leon starts to surge up, Kamaru just ups the pace more and more, traps him with his footwork, cuts him off, faints and fakes, and really kind of get in the mind space of Leon Edwards, just on him all the time. And I look for Kamaru to do the same thing, to push the pace, to not sit back. When he sat back, it was disaster for him. So I look for him to really get into Leon's face and, and, and try to bully him around, honestly, and try to get that title back. Well, Kamaru Usman has a lot to prove in this matchup, which is saying something based on the trajectory of what his championship reign was before Leon Edwards landed that head kick. And for Leon Edwards, of course, he wants to prove that that was no fluke, no lucky shot with one minute to go in the fifth round. For Safe Saud, Brendan Fitzgerald, thanks for watching UFC Breakdown. What a night it should be in London at UFC 286.